Welcome back to Let's Play Pocket Monsters Green Version. When we last left off, I was just about to go explore the museum. I don't recommend going in here if you're just doing a regular playthrough of the game because, well, there is a 50 yen entrance fee and uh, it, there's not really anything in here for you to get, but for the purposes of a Let's Play, I'm still gonna show it off. Now, these fossils here, they're actually, they actually belong to forms of missing no, or Ketsuban as it's known in the Japanese version. The way it works is that certain, uh, certain hexadecimal numbers that aren't taken up by Pokemon have been filled using a placeholder Pokemon known as, well, missing no, or Ketsuban in the Japanese version, as I just said. And they just decided to kill two birds with one stone and gave them, uh, gave them these sprites so that... Yeah, when you're actually looking at these fossils, you're actually looking at the sprite of a Ketsuban. This space shuttle here, it says it's the space shuttle Columbia. In the localization for Fire Red and Leaf Green, they changed it to just being an unnamed, uh, an unnamed space shuttle because, well, there was a disaster um, involving this space shuttle in 2003 where. Uh, all the crew members were killed, and as we all know, the responsible way to uh, pay respects to victims of tragic events like that is to pretend that they never happened in the first place. Hey, it kind of sounds like what the anime people are doing with the Porygon episode. So as you've noticed, I'm not going for the gym just yet. Uh, I want to go back and do something that I didn't do before, namely the rival battle on Route 22. Uh, and the reason for that is, well, I didn't do it the first time because when you first get the chance to do that battle, you're still way under leveled for what they expect you to fight there. And I like doing it as sort of a preparation for the gym, especially since I still need two more levels uh, before I learn Vine Whip, Vine Whip, which I, I absolutely need if I want to stand a chance in the gym. That may be a, a good reason to to pick Zenigame over Fushigidane because I, I'm pretty sure it learns Bubble a few levels earlier. Something I uh, I've been wanting to talk about is the differences between the Japanese red and green and uh, the English red and blue. Well, the differences. This whole uh, let's play is about the differences, but specifically about the differences between like the 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 versions. Because I see a lot of confusion about that. Some people seem to think that there is no Japanese blue version, for instance, or that it was only released after a blue came out, red and blue came out in the West. That's not really true. There was, well, red and green, Japanese red and green were the first games, and the, the only real difference between them is, you know, uh, wild Pokemon encounters. But then they made a Japanese blue, which was mostly a graphical update. Uh, all the Pokemon got new front sprites and um, uh, a bunch of other graphical updates and also the encounters were different again and also some bug fixes a few a few different uh, a few other differences as well um, but yeah the uh, Japanese blue was originally just uh, a limited edition uh, released to subscribers of Koro Koro magazine. But then they later gave it a full, uh, an unlimited release after the release of Red and Blue in America, which I don't know if there was a relation to Blue being released, released in America and that's why they released it there, but, um, or if it's just a coincidence, but yeah, anyway, there is a Japanese Blue and it came out before uh, the... Whoa! I was going to catch... I... Oh, shit. I want to catch that, but I don't, because there's something I want to. I I, I want to catch one of these sooner or later. And it's rare in green. It's common in red, but it's rare in green. Uh, and I want to catch one of these for my team, but I'm not gonna do it just yet. And that's why it's so it sucks so bad that I'm just getting it without trying on the first fucking encounter. Uh, yeah, the reason I'm not catching it just yet is because. Uh, there's there's something I want to show off a bit later uh, that is one of the better kept secrets of the game that 
requires me to not have any Pokemon other than my starter registered as caught. So yeah, it kind of sucks that I just found that without even trying. So, um, yeah, here is Khan, my second battle against him. And he is gonna have a level 9 Popo and a level 8 uh, Hitokage, or whatever his starter was, depending on what you picked. The starter still doesn't have any super effective moves against you. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the case no matter what starter you pick. Uh, and I also, well, I'm not at level 13 yet, so I don't have uh, a not very effective move against it myself. But yeah, not that it matters because I wouldn't use it anyway. So yeah, uh, back to what I was saying about... Um, about the red and green, red and blue uh, differences is the fact that, the, well, it's not as simple as American red is a localization of Japanese red and American blue is a localization of Japanese blue and green is the one that we never got. A lot of people seem to think that way, but that's not really how it works at all. It's really more, the, the versions that we got in the West are sort of, Twisted hybrids of the three different Japanese versions and by that I mean they uh, Red is a hybrid between Japanese red and blue and American blue is a hybrid between Japanese uh, green and blue and the the encounters from American red and blue are respectively from Japanese red and green, but all the other differences, like the, the graphical di uh, differences and bug fixes that I mentioned earlier, and all those other, you know, differences, they were taken from blue. So that means, since random encounters are pretty much the main difference between Pokemon versions, the version we got, the blue version that we got is actually closer to Japanese green than it is to Japanese blue. So, well, it green is widely considered to be the one that we never got, but in reality, I think that title, I think people should consider blue that. And there's even a fan translation of green that's, that's really just the official English translation copy-pasted over to the to the uh, the green version, as well as some other edits that were done in localization, just copied over. So yeah, whoop the fucking do! Great job! You just recreated American Blue. What a complete waste of time! If anything deserves a fan translation, it's Japanese Blue because well, there are some. You know how in uh, American Red and Blue, as well as in Yellow, you never ever get the chance to catch a wild Jinx, and the only one. You can, the only one you can get in the entire game is one from an in-game trade that has a, a stupid nickname st forever stuck to it. Well, in Japanese blue, you can catch them in the wild. And that, that it's just so stupid that we consider green this, this foreign version that we never got. This happens sometimes in generation one that, um, the uh, the music after the battle kind of is is like missing one channel i don't know what causes it or what triggers it but it's just some weird thing that happens sometimes in generation 1 but yeah i really think it should be considered japanese blue that's uh, the one that we never got instead of green because well Enco random encounters are pretty much the main difference of what makes these versions unique, so the fact that the blue encounters are the ones that never made it to the west, that's a, that's a pretty strong argument for why blue should really be, be uh, considered the one we never got rather than green. Uh, but people don't really think that far and they just look at the title green, oh that's, we never got a green version in America, so that must be the one that's different, except it really isn't. So yeah, about that thing I was mentioning earlier, uh, about um, a, a well-kept secret in the game that not many people know about. 
Uh, I'm gonna go do something that may seem really stupid. I, I'm gonna... Sell the one monster ball I have because... Well, the requirements for, for doing this are A. Not having any Pokemon registered as caught other than your starter. B. Not having any monster balls in your possession. And C. Having beat your rival on Route 22. So what you wanna do is go back to Masara Town and talk to the professor and he is going to give me five monster balls. Uh, yeah, if you didn't know about this, well, you don't have to feel so bad because you know who else seemed to be completely unaware of, uh, of this feature's existence? The proofreaders for the English version. There's a part in this dialogue right here where the one line of dialogue doesn't like, the text box doesn't scroll down, and instead of the new line appearing underneath the previous one, it overrides it. And that was sort of fixed in Jap in, in English yellow, but even there, there's still a typo, or not a typo, but there's one character that's kind of cut off uh, from, the, from the text box, and it, it's just, it just doesn't show at all. Actually, let me talk to this guy again. Yeah, he tells me about... <laughs> ironically, he tells me about... Um, about buying Monster Balls at the at the Pokemon, uh, Pokemon shop, friendly shop. Even though I just went there to sell one and then I got five for free. Yeah, they're called... they're called a friendly store. Friendly shop. Uh, I don't know why the English version changed it to... to... to Mart. But not only did they change the name, they changed the signs outside of the, the, the shop itself. It says shop in the Japanese version and it says mart in the English version. Well, if you're going to, cha if you're going to change the, uh, the name, if you're gonna, if your name change requires you to change the fucking sign, then maybe you're, even though the name change was completely pointless in the first place, why even do it? The same for the Pokemon Center. The 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 English version replaces the E with like their their stupid little uh, lowercase E with the accent over it, which I think the the reason the English version always spelled it that way and it, and was later like adapted by the Japanese version, the the spelling with the cap with the um, accent on the E rather than just a regular E. I think it was done so that people wouldn't pronounce it Pokemon, but then that totally backfired and people started saying Pokemon, including the dub sometimes. Okay, now I'm really getting uh, sidetracked. I'm just gonna go and put... I'm a fucking idiot. I... <laughs> this is actually... This is my third take recording this episode. And uh, this time I completely forgot to go and um, go and catch that Nidoran from earlier. Yeah, I'm, I'm still pissed that I found a Nidoran on the first try without even trying when I, when I was still actively trying to avoid catching Pokemon in order to show off that uh, free Monster Balls trick. I, I, I was about... yeah, what I was doing there in Tokyo Forest is... Um, I wanted to ch I wanted to switch my lead to Nidoran, but I completely forgot that I hadn't caught it yet because I did in the previous recordings. I okay, I am a fucking idiot. Uh, yeah, and like I said, the male Nidoran is the rare one in this version. I kind of put a curse on myself by putting playing green instead of red, but hey, uh. Like I was saying, people thought, gr people think green is the one that we never got, so if you have a... I don't wanna, I don't wanna, it's not really clickbait, okay, I'm, I'm sounding defensive right now, I know. But I'm doing green mo uh, mostly because, well, when people, when people look, if people want, if people were to look for a Japanese Let's Play of Pokemon, a, a Let's Play of Pokemon, the Japanese version, they would probably look for green. And uh, yeah, that's why I decided to play green uh, instead of red or blue. So I'm not gonna show you the entire uh, process of me looking for this thing again. 
but uh, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna cut this out. And Fushigidane grew to level 13 and is going to learn Vine Whip. Look at this! Look at this shit! I have been looking for this thing for so long. I have ran out of Vine Whip PP and only have one PP left on tackle. I am going to have to go back to the Pokemon Center and heal just because this thing won't show up. Or well, I guess I could run from the battles, but I want the experience. Fuck you. Look at my Fushigidane's levels. One more and it's about to evolve before the first fucking gym. That's how long it takes this thing to fucking show up. And you just earlier, you were you were just there. Did I just was that just the only Nidoran on this fucking route? Did I just did I just extinct? Did I just make this whole fucking species go extinct? And my recording is at 30 minutes on the dot right now. That's how much I'm cutting out. Jesus Christ. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. The very next encounter. Oh. Yes! Okay. Uh, so I'm not gonna... I'm afraid Vine Whipper Tackle might kill it, so I'm just gonna go, uh... Leech Seed it. And then I'm gonna just immediately start chucking balls at it. I swear, if, if I'm not gonna catch it with these five balls that I have, then I'm gonna fucking riot. That... Did nothing. R are you serious? Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna wait. I'm just gonna wait until it drains its health a little bit more. Once again, I'm too scared to do any of these, so I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna growl at it just to stall for time. Yeah, it's defense. It's defense things. If it ever bothered to attack me at all, it's... It's it's attack sync, I mean. If it ever bothered to attack me at all, there you go! Okay, I'm, I'm gonna... I'm gonna let it... I'm gonna let Leech Seed drain it until it's in the... In the yellow, and then I'm gonna... Okay. There we go. Let's try another ball. There we go! Okay! <laughs> that was... That was way harder than it had any right to be. Ah, <sighs> no, I'm not gonna give it a nickname. I'm not gonna bother with nicknames throughout this LP because, well... Uh, the whole reason I'm doing this LP is... Uh, I wanna educate people about the... The Japanese version of these games, and part of that is the Japanese names of, of each Pokemon. If I, if I started naming, if I started giving nicknames, and like, let's say I named Nidoran, I don't know, uh, some, I, I, let's say, just because I'm talking to the nurse right now, let's say I named Nidoran Joy, and maybe, maybe people would, and, and I started calling it that, then maybe, people would start thinking that Nidoran's, in Nidoran's Japanese name is Joy and I don't want to add even more confusion to uh, the already fucked up principle of uh, having to learn like five different names of each Pokemon in, in different languages if you're if you're if you're bi if you're bilingual or if you're trilingual like me you have to learn three well yeah I just said you have to learn five, but if you're bilingual, you only have to learn two. And if you're trilingual like me, that's three. Seriously, who thought that was a good idea? It's we're in generation eight of this of this shit, and we're still doing this. Especially, okay, I don't mind it so much for like for like uh, names that are distinctly Japanese, but Transil right here, that's a name that's already in English, and yet it has different names in different languages. Why? Just fucking why? I have to- You know how I learned these Japanese names? 
Flashcards. Learning the names of fictional creatures in a language should not require the same methods that it takes to learn that language in the fucking first place. For a franchise that has become, over the years, become as globalized as Pokemon has, to the point where the Japanese versions are being pre-censored so that the, the English version doesn't make, have to make any edits, like that space shuttle thing I talked about earlier in Let's Go, that censorship made it into the Japanese version. For a franchise that has become this globalized, I cannot understand why they cannot fucking make the names the same. And you know what? Generation 8! The first Generation 8 Pokemon just got announced. They, they're still doing this shit! Like... Like, okay, those Generation 8 names that we have right now, those are still... Those are very Japanese names that we wouldn't understand with like... Uh, if English speakers wouldn't understand what the names are coming from, so there, I get it. But like, every time there's a new generation that comes out, I always have that shimmer of hope that this is... The time when they finally realized the obvious. But you know what? Last generation, the first, some of the first Pokemon that got released, or some of the first Pokemon that got uh, announced, look at this shit. Why are these names? They, they don't even, what, what the fuck do they even mean? Why are they so different in every other language, yet somehow so similar? It's all like Tapu, Kaka, Poo Poo. Eat that Poo Poo! What the fuck? You know, you already see, like, Gen 1 is complaining that there's way too many Pokemon to remember now. Well, try remembering them all three times in different languages, or four if you even speak more languages than that. You have to fucking communicate that shit. Like, like do you remember when, when Pokemon Go got announced? They had a trailer where there was, like, a, a white kid and an Asian kid, like, meeting on the street. And they're, they're like, trying to communicate. They don't understand each other. Suddenly one of them says Pokemon and everything clicks. BULLSHIT! If you cannot even have the, the creatures themselves have the same names across different languages, then what the, how the fuck do you expect this franchise to work with international communication? And there's, there's more I have to say on this subject, but uh, for now, I, I think we're... Uh, this is a good time to end this video. Um, I'm just gonna heal here and uh, then join me next time as we finally take on the gym after this entire episode of procrastination. Deeper!